Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rockets. Today we have our biggest all-metal, fully reusable rocket motor casing that we have ever done. We're calling this one the Mega Monkey. Before this, our previous one, the Robo Monkey, was very dependable. We've launched this several times, but as you can see, a little bit of a difference in size. We've really moved up on this. So, we're going to take a look at the parts and some of the construction methods that we use to build this. And at the end of the video, we're going to do some ground tests to see what kind of thrust we get out of this. So, stay tuned. Today I'm working on making the nozzle assembly. I'm starting out with a piece of solid round steel stock. This is 2 and 7 16 diameter by 5 inches long. It's just under 7 pounds, which is pretty heavy, but we're going to take a lot of material off of that. Now the design of the nozzle was done on Richard Naka's SRM spreadsheet, and then I took his design and drew it out on AutoCAD so I would have some detailed specifications. So five inches long is way longer than what I need. The finished design is only going to be about three and three-eighths inch long. So I'm going to cut this down to about three and a half inches to start just so I don't have so much mass on the lathe. So that was a lot of work for my little tiny cutoff saw, and unfortunately I actually just blew out the saw. So that's okay, it was just a cheap little saw I got at an auction, and I've been looking to get a new one anyways. So I got about, oh, about 80% through or so. I'll just finish that off with a hacksaw. And there you have it. Now we're ready to put that on the lathe. Now I'm not going to show the entire lathing process because this is going to take several hours. So we'll just show little clips of video as the nozzle starts to take form. And here we have the finished nozzle. It came out really nice. It's got a 35 degree half angle convergent, a 12 degree half angle divergent, and a number 32 nozzle or half inch diameter nozzle hole. This is the pipe we're going to use for the rocket motor. It's a 2 inch inside diameter Schedule 40 aluminum pipe nipple. It weighs 848 grams or about one pound 14 ounces. The plan is to have 16 inches of fuel in this motor. But because we are going to cut off one of these threaded ends of the pipe nipple, I purchased an 18 inch long piece of material. And then later, we'll have a machine shop cut off one end and weld in an aluminum plug at the bulkhead end of the motor. Here I've got a two inch steel coupling. It's a threaded coupling, threaded all the way through. This threads onto our two inch aluminum pipe nipple for the rocket motor. And what we'll do is we'll tighten that up nice and snug with some tools. And then because we don't need the entire length of this coupling, we'll put it on the chop saw and cut it off so that it sticks past the aluminum pipe just about an eighth of an inch. I've got that cut down to length and you see it just sticks up a little bit past the aluminum pipe in there and I also put on the pipe 
tape that I would normally put on this during the installation of the nozzle assembly. So this is the exact fit that we'll be expecting to get when we have the finished motor assembly. And then the nozzle simply fits down into that. It rests down on the aluminum pipe. And that gives a nice little groove in here for the machine shop to weld that nozzle assembly to that fitting. So we're here at the machine shop today. My buddy Corey is going to weld up the nozzle assembly for us. He's going to TIG weld that together. So let's take a look at that process. We're at the machine shop again, and they've made this aluminum cap to go into the top of the motor casing. Now you can see the aluminum cap doesn't actually quite fit into the casing. It's a few thousandths of an inch bigger than the inside diameter of the case. This is going to be what's called an interference fit. So the aluminum cap is put into ice water to help that shrink just a little bit. And then he's going to heat up the casing with a torch just a little bit to help that pipe expand. Then the two pieces will simply slip together. Once the temperatures equalize, that cap is really stuck in there very well. And then he can go ahead and he's going to aluminum TIG weld the cap to the casing. All right, so the motor's done. We are going to do a ground test today to see how much thrust we can get out of this. We're using a Flexi Fuel Bates Core fuel cell. We've decided to go with just a single large fuel cell for the first test. That'll be the maximum amount of pressure that we can build in this casing. And if the casing does survive that, then we'll go ahead and try another ground test with four individual smaller fuel cells and see what kind of performance difference we get. But for today, We've just got this gigantic single fuel cell. So, we're going to get this assembled and we'll get out and do a ground test. So that was the first ground test for our Mega Monkey motor. If we could sum that up in one word, it would probably be wow. At its peak output, the scale was reading 420 pounds of force. To put that into perspective, our Robo Monkey that we've been using to send up our Eliminator series of rockets for the last couple of launches puts out 80 pounds of force. The motor we had in the Eliminators before that, which was a PVC case housing, put out 100 pounds of force, and our little Kiwi motor that's good for 2 inch rockets puts out 20 pounds of force. So the jump to 420 pounds of force is really impressive. So there did seem to be some type of a burn problem with the fuel cell in here. Now bearing in mind this was the first time we've done a really large single fuel cell, and technically this type of casing and motor is supposed to use multiple fuel cells, Bates core fuel cells. So this was really just an experiment to see what would happen. Um, basically what we saw from the the data in the video was we got a really powerful burn for about 1.3 seconds and then it immediately dropped down and we got a really weak burn for about 1.6 seconds. And that was really not expected. We really expected a powerful burn for about a total of two seconds. So something clearly didn't go right uh, or as expected with the burn rate of the fuel cell that was in there. Hopefully doing a multi-core system on our next test will solve that problem. 
Now just looking at the, the casing and the nozzle, we didn't take on any damage up here at the bulkhead. The weld held up perfectly fine and the nozzle held up perfectly fine as well. We didn't have any blow by at the threads at the nozzle. So that held up very well. However, there is one problem. And I'm not entirely sure if you're going to be able to see it on the video, but up here at the top on the bulkhead end, there is a nasty bulge in the side of the casing. And if I put a ruler up against that, you can see that we get a really bad bulge up there, and that goes around the whole top of the casing here. So that's really been compromised. Now, possibly the casing might have been weakened by the high temperature of the weld that was done at the top at the bulkhead area. So that's a possibility that it was just weaker than it was supposed to be. But clearly we built up a lot of pressure to be able to cause a bulge in that area. So this casing is essentially um, destroyed. We're not going to use this again just because of that damage. What we are going to do is rebuild. So I've purchased a 16 inch aluminum pipe nipple same exact as this other than this was an 18 inch that we cut the threads off of one end so that we could weld in that bulkhead. We're not going to do that style again. Instead, we're going to duplicate the same idea that we use on the Robo Monkey, and that is to have the steel nozzle on one end and we use this steel coupling on the other end. We'll cut that down to size and we'll make another bulkhead a steel bulkhead just like this one that threads onto the end. And then on the next ground test that this goes on, this will have five fuel cells inside instead of the one single fuel cell. So let's go ahead and build that and then we'll go ahead and test it. Alright guys, so we decided to split this into two videos just for time reasons. Uh, stay tuned and we will have more development coming on this real soon. If this video is pretty new, then we probably haven't recorded part two yet. Uh, if you're watching this a few weeks after we release it, then check down in the description and there should be a link for part two. We've definitely got more coming with this motor. Uh, so thanks for watching and don't forget, if you like what we're doing, go ahead and click the like button and please do us a favor, also click the subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.